Hi guys, welcome to the hack and slash version of this demo. In this tutorial we're going to go back to the original starting mesh that we sort of started with with Beto and we're going to have a quick demo of how quickly and easily it is to really hack into the mesh. Now the number one mistake that a lot of students make is they're really just a bit too cautious with their modeling skills and you can actually be really rough and kind of messy with meshes. They're quite, they're quite uh, flexible and what you can do is really start to smash smash the topology and really force some of these patterns out of the mesh. Now this is a big part of a modeler's job is just re reflowing topology and a lot of guys these days are using uh, sculpting packages like Mudbox and, and ZBrush but uh, very fast modelers once you're in the industry really start from base meshes first and the reason is because it actually takes quite a lot of time to sculpt your models and then take them back into a modeling package and retopologize re those and tweak them and there's, there's a, a lot of time involved in that so if we can just start in a package with our base mesh and get that job pretty much there especially with simple models like a cartoony character we're just saving ourselves a lot of time so polygon modeling skills are still very important for animated characters now so let's go backwards this is the, sort of what we ended up with so we're gonna go right back to the start here so this is sort of a base mesh model that we've got here. Let's have a look at the topology. This is what a lot of my models look like when I'm starting as well and this is uh, obviously Beto's model. He's brought it into me and he's just just we're just going over a few top topology tricks. This is really tools. Beto's a great model already. He's produced some nice stuff but he just wanted to get really into the workflow and, and to, to see how I work as a as a professional modeler. Now uh, this is the start. Uh, First thing is we're just going to go in and we, we talked about reference, so reference, reference, reference guys, don't underestimate the importance of that. Uh, I got him to do a quick sketch for me, we, we went onto the internet to some 3D sites and we just had a look at how other people were solving these problems of, of meshes and ca cartoony characters and we found a couple of eyes that we liked, the brows, the main thing was we wanted the, the eyebrows to be a bit bigger, we wanted them to be really, uh, have a nice bag under the eye and a nice uh, big eyelid. Uh, and we wanted the eyebrows to really flow like this. Beto really likes this clean sort of style in his meshes so we're going to keep that and keep the rest of the mesh quite simply. So in this tutorial I'm not going to go too far but we'll just start to go over a bit of my workflow topology of hacking into meshes really quick, quickly. So let's get started here. Now as I said the biggest mistake that most people make is they're just a little bit too cautious with meshes so let's kind of just go in here and really force out a brow to how we'd want it so there's something pretty stock standard that's where we want our brow to go let's just go in here now and I'm just gonna like not even worry I'm just getting super messy here and we're just gonna go through and sort of like cut out the lines of that brow uh, as Beta was saying don't fear the future is his, is his favorite saying as he was watching me do this I think uh, he, like a lot of other students that I've taught, sort of go a little bit too cautious on, on their topology tutorials. So one thing that I always do is go back to here and since we're only working on the front face, let's go through and we like to uh, have back face culling on. Now these normals look like they're flipped the wrong way, so let's just reverse those. Now we're not seeing the back face. I always have a hotkey for that, so if you want the back face, not, uh, back face wireframe to be on and showing through you can make a little toggle for that which is in my preferences so here we go we've got the start of that eyebrow now let's just add another loop in here so we can just move some of these guys across uh, quite quickly that's the center of our model and we're just going to get another sort of line flowing up here and out this way so let's get stuck into that and here we go so we're just going to get that starting to move over this way so just using the split polygon tool, the interactive split tool. Now I'm just going to go through here and delete some of this stuff that we don't need. So there's a special hotkey for deleting uh, edges that I like to use. So let's just get that started here. Now, as we're going along, what I like to do is just model on one side. We can switch the symmetry mode on, but uh, I prefer just to like hack and slash into the mesh and then just mirror that over. I've got a script for that mirror script so uh, I'll put that in the details. Now what we got here is just you know a simple sort of a mesh that's t starting to take shape and you can see how quickly I can really rough some of this stuff out. Uh, we've got another triangle there so let's just edge loop split that. No, 
instead of that, we're going to use a, a special edge loop. So here's our special edge loop split tool. So we just cut from one place and down to the next. We're just going to end it out just somewhere there. So we don't have to go all the way with our meshes either. We can just kind of like leave this open topology where there's no quads and things like that. So when you get display problems like this in vertice mode, we just go and select all those vertices, unselect, get back, and we can get that. It's just a Maya buggy display problem. So now we're really just hacking out this mesh here. Uh, another bit of bad topology there. Just get rid of some of this stuff. Um, so we've got our meshes sort of nicely flowing across like this. There we go. And you could even try <coughs> and hook some of this stuff up together. So with the hotkeys, you can just see how quickly I'm putting some of this stuff together. Uh, we can grab some of these edges, double click, and then we can slide that edge up a little bit more easily. That way we've got a little bit more room to make this stuff into quads. And the new uh, interactive split tool is a little bit buggy, so we'll just make that again. Three, and take that out. We can mirror that again. Delete history, freeze transforms, I always do that every now and again. So now we've got the sort of the, the start of our mesh sort of coming around here. And we want to like start to belt, to make in a bit of an eye here that we can get a bit of a better shape. Now, the trick with eyes really, and there's a triangle, so we're just going to leave that there. All this sort of stuff later on we can go through and we can just uh, fix all this stuff up later, like all this area. And But for now we're just concentrating on getting those main key lines working properly. And, and that's the sort of the way that we do that. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is go into the eye and just start to make that a little bit better. So the easiest way to make eyes is really to start with a good eye shape. So here's an, a nice sphere there. Uh, let's just zoom in on that. That's just a polygon sphere. And what we can do with eyes, which is a quite neat little trick, we're going to make the eyes a little bit bigger. We looked at the reference and we decided, Beto decided he didn't want these big eyes. He wanted something a little bit, a li little bit bigger, sorry. So I go in there and just take two planes and you can scale down the second one and this makes like a bit of an iris shape and we can just delete one half of that. So let's just go inside on here and we can hit delete. And now we've got a nice irisy sort of shape. And we're just going to assign quick textures to this. So assign new material and let's just go to Lambert. Uh, it probably could be a blin actually so let's just make that white let's make this one a new blin and we'll make this one uh, a dark color so straight away got a nice cartoony eye there you can just parent one to the other and now we can select that as an eye and we've got an eyeball which is quite easy to make nice and simple uh, this sphere here by default let's see if we've got history which we do doesn't quite have enough geometry in it and the smoothing is making it into this rather bad looking egg shape even though we've scaled here properly so let's just give that a few more divisions 8 and maybe even 12 and that's going to get our eye a bit nicer that's looking good now this lens doesn't really matter so much okay so now we've got this nice eye in shape delete the other side and we're just going to position it properly so let's just move it back over to here somewhere where we want even make it a little bit bigger. Put it back in the in the head where it should be. It's back here a little bit. So now that we've got this eye sort of position, let's start placing this eye around where that eye should be. Now we can put that in a layer if we wish. There we go. And just uh, we'll reference that. Add selected objects, and, and we can make that referenced and that's unselectable now, which is quite handy. And we can grab a couple of these like faces here. And what we're going to do now is just go into our nice B. B key. Actually, I can just grow that out a little bit, just maybe twice, and we can just move that without doing much. So we're kind of in the ballpark there. Let's move some of these vertices. And you can just see how quickly some of this shape is sort of starting to take form. Even though it's a, a real mess in some parts, we can really start to, to grab some of these vertices and start to make things line up a lot better, as we can see here.